I got this chainsaw from a small engine mechanic. He couldn't get it to kick over and said, see if you can figure something out. When he had it, he put a new coil in it, checked for spark, has good spark, bypassed the on-off switch just in case that was bad. That didn't get it to kick over. He also sprayed ether in the carburetor, couldn't get it to kick over, took the spark plug out, sprayed ether in the cylinder, put a new spark plug in, still wouldn't kick over. Sometimes you look at something so long that you miss something simple, or maybe there's a bigger problem with it. Let's take a look at it and see if we can get it going. seems to have good compression so I don't think that's the problem let's take the air filter off and spray some ether in it maybe his ether wasn't good see if that'll get it going Choke on. Nothing. Try disconnecting the kill switch again. Got that disconnected. Choke on, choke off. Nothing. Let's remove the spark plug, double check for spark. Put a brand new plug in it. Check for spark. For spark. While I've got the plug out, I'll try spraying a little ether starting fluid right in the cylinder. Aha! That tells me there's probably a carburetor problem. And my guess is that spraying the ether in the carburetor isn't working because the carburetor is clogged somewhere and not getting the gas to the piston so it can fire. Let's take that apart and take a look at it. To access the carburetor, we're going to have to take this handle and guard off. And we'll have to split the handle so we can get the th th throttle disconnected. Keep these pieces together. And disconnect the throttle. Now we can remove that. And here's our carburetor. Still behind this piece here. I'm going to have to get that off. Up to this point, 
all these screws have come out off with a star bit. But this little cover here has a Phillips head screw. And I'll keep those pieces together. And finally, here's our carburetor. Let's take that apart and clean it up. And there's the cover. We can just tip that up out of the way. And our choke lever. And here's our throttle. Disconnect the fuel lines. Let's clean this carburetor up and see if we can get it running. We'll set this aside. And get a clean spot to work on that carburetor. I'm going to blow carb cleaner through here and compressed air, clean this all out. Carefully remove this diaphragm and clean that up. Make sure all the ports are open and put it back together. There's the reed valves. It's a filter, it's a little dirty. We'll clean that out. Clean this up. Clean that screen. Sometimes that filter can just get gummed up with uh, bad gasoline. And this carburetor cleaner will break that down. Looks good now. There's a little hole there and I can see straight through. Here's our reed valve. Set that aside. I'm just going to leave that gasket on there. That's blowing through good. Just clean that. Take our compressed air. Blow out the filter. Looks nice and clean.
Now we'll move over to the carburetor base and carefully remove this diaphragm without tearing it. And it looks like it's in pretty good shape. We'll set that aside. And here's our needle valve. We'll remove that and clean that out and then put it back together. Hopefully we'll be good to go. There's a spring right underneath here. So I'm going to loosen this screw, pull that up, but I'm also going to hold this so the spring doesn't shoot off and I lose that. There we go. Loosen that. Let it up carefully. There's the needle, the spring's still there. Clean that up. And blow that out. looks good and sometimes I take a little wire clean these ports out And then our compressed air. Now we'll put the needle valve back in. Put the spring in. needle valve and these forks go underneath the head there set this back in there and there's a little dimple on there on the back side of that the spring fits into that and that holds the spring in place And then the set screw. I don't know if you can see in there, but I do have the spring set in there right. And it looks to be operating properly. Snug that down. Put our diaphragm back on there. There's a little nub on here which fits in that hole so you can't get this in the wrong place. You want to make sure you get that lined up. There we go.
There we go. Can reassemble now. I checked the fuel lines and they're not brittle, no cracks. I actually blew a little air in there and it built up pressure and flowed, fuel flowed freely. I checked this line and this line so those are all good. I cleaned up the gasket, pulled it off, wiped all that down, and now we'll put the carburetor back on. First I'll hook up the fuel supply line from the gas tank to the carburetor. And then the primer, which is the return. And we can slide the carburetor in place. There we go. Got to hook up the throttle cable. I have to pull the carburetor out just a little bit. Get that in there. And we can slide that in. And now we're ready for the cover. Fit in place. Put the nuts back on. Again, you don't want to put these too tight. They need to be snug so you don't get air or fuel leaks. But it's just aluminum, so you just want to snug them up. While I'm at this point, I like to check that the primer's working. I don't know if you can see that, but it's really flowing through very nice. The throttle is working. It is. The choke set up. Good. Move on to the next step. Put this bottom cover on. Bring the throttle cable through there. We'll put the guard back on. Then we just have to put the handle and throttle back together. This goes on top of that little nub there. The spring pushes against there. All right, I think we can try to fire it up. The last thing I'm gonna do, I don't know if they've done this, but the gas might be old in here. So I'm gonna dump this out and put fresh gas in there and we'll give it a try.
If this video was a help to you, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And I look forward to helping you with other projects online.